was coming straight out of the soul of Europe, pretty much. Being able to come to Hamburg and play in a, in a huge stadium is going to be completely crazy. Fnatic will not be an easy opponent. Reckless going to like Twitch and just always going both lane, even when Baron is up for like, for like 20 minutes. I think we need to look out for that. Alpha is probably the, the one top laner that is like really hard to play against. I think it'll be nice to end a series on a minute. And instead of uh, like being down about the, the G2 series, we're gonna step up to the plate and beat Misfits. The former Kings Fnatic coming in from Challenger. of competition, the Spring Split has led us here to the fabulous Barclay Card Arena, which will play host to tonight's clash between Fnatic and Misfits. So many thousands of fans outside waiting, dressed up, all nice and ready for the fun and the action tonight here in the Barclay Card Arena, as well as the players preparing backstage. Yeah, they should excited it for this third match, the Cider and Concentrated. On the win, good evening after everyone. I'm Efe Shog Zaporter, and with me to cover all of today's action are Andrew Various Day and Splice's Jonas Trashy Anderson. So, um, to start it off, I saw on Twitter that you're very good at German nowadays, so is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, moin Moin Hamburg. That works, that works. That's not bad, that's not bad. Guten uh, Tag, Hamburg. Ich heiße Various. Wie geht's? Sehr gut, äh, mir geht auch gut. Danke. Ja, ich freue mich, äh, freu mich natürlich, um hier mit euch allen zusammen zu sein, das ganze Wochenende League of Legends zu gucken. A great weekend of League of Legends here with the finals between the Unicorns of Love and G2 tomorrow and the third place bout between Misfits and Fnatic today. So let's dive into the matchup today and the bracket to see how these two teams, Fnatic and Misfits, made it here. Unfortunately for them, falling just in the semifinals, but a good run nonetheless. It really was a good run. We had a very exciting quarterfinal match with Misfits getting themselves the reverse sweep up against Splice, and we saw Fnatic getting a surprising upset up against H2K, taking that 3-0. And you know, for, for both teams, just getting to, to the stage here is a huge accomplishment, I think, for how the, the split has been. So I think both teams should be excited to be able to play in front of such a huge crowd. Yeah, I agree, and we heard it there in the opening video as well. For Misfits, it was their inaugural split, their very first split here, and they may be a bit disappointed that they didn't make it to the final, but they have their eyes set on the third place match, and it would be a fantastic ending and also a start to the summer for them. It really will be. I think that as a team, Misfits have grown a lot. Remember that coming in from Challenger, this was a team that some people considered overhyped. The expectations were, ah, how will they really compete against Ch uh, the LCS teams? But they came into Group A and they demolished those expectations and sat at the top throughout the regular season. And demolished Splice. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we don't really <laughs> want to talk about that, but uh, I mean, their split has been great overall. Like, I think in playoffs, they have been, haven't been playing like, as good as they played in the split. But uh, we have to understand, like, it's a young team. They have a lot of things to learn, and I think just being able to play on the stage is a huge accomplishment for them. It definitely will be, as it will be for Fnatic. They had a late season surge that resulted in a dominant 3 0 win against H2K in the playoffs. They almost didn't make it to the playoffs. It wasn't looking good for them throughout the split, and it is really admirable how they managed to pull it all together when it mattered most and that's also how they're going to approach this match yeah i'm really excited to see Fnatic play once again i i love the fact that they gave up the idea of the perfect game and instead they decided to play the Fnatic game they picked a style that is extremely difficult for teams to be able to deal with it's enabled them to flourish and while g2 are able to adapt i think that it will be an exciting thing to bring out and we have to remember like Fnatic in the in the second game could easily take in the second game and then maybe they would have, would have been in the grand final so they have really shown uh, improvement in the playoffs and I want to see how they, they play today. 
Yeah, definitely so. And there's a lot on the line today. In addition to the pride that comes with third place, the teams are also fighting for championship points as they take their first steps towards Worlds 2017 because that is what all LCS teams, of course, and all teams around the world fight for. And getting some championship points on the board here would be a great start. Yeah, I mean, these points really matter and at the end of the season, like end of some summer split, when we, we need to find out which teams from EU are going to the World Championships. So these, these points today can be crucial if you're going to Worlds or not. Yeah, definitely. We saw it last year as well. And just for Misfits, they said, this is our one-year plan. This is our goal. And we thought, well, is that maybe because you're underestimating yourself going into the playoffs? But they can be proud of what they've shown so far. And it will be up to also the individual players who are on the big stage for the first time to show that they're worthy. Yeah, I think there are a lot of standout individual performers on the side of Misfits. Power of Evil is one of the ones that we've really been looking at. Not only is he playing on his home turf, but he's also been one of the standout carries where if he can get a lead, he has such a fantastic ability to transition that lead across the rest of the map. And what's funny about Misfit is that during the split, everyone was like, holy, holy moly, Kakao is so good. Uh, but in the playoffs, he it's kind of the other players that have been stepping up. Like we have seen Alfari carry games, we've seen Han Sama carry games. So I, I want to see Kakao show up today and show what he's worth. Well, we will see. We will dial in on this matchup further in just a bit. But first, there is something still left to settle. We know our all pro team, our rookie and our coach of the split. But there is one more honor to bestow. Let's meet your EU LCS 2017 Spring Split Most Valuable Player. Been dreaming of the payoff. Through the struggles and the trade-offs Right in tooth, they'd nail on the way up Tell them the truth, but they think it's just made up Cause we're gonna be legends New Tech gets locked inside the ultimatum And New Tech is down Unicorns turn to five on three around It's a double kill for Chachi He's got Dak, a triple He can look for more Hichani's the target This might be the quadra And Scott Bag Zerxi stole the penta Josh is just going to run to safety. He doesn't have to use it to engage. Flash out. Cabo still wants more. Waiting. Perry going in. Hextech ultimate available. Going to try to trap him in there. Cabo cannot oh! afford the bait. Oh, he wants to try and kill Storius. Visit Josh going to flash. He's going to get Storius. Oh! Chachi. That's why Visit Chachi was ranked number one on our statistical analysis. I spy with my little eye player of the series, rather. Visit Chachi. Game one, Chachi did play uh, better than Odoanle. Why not go full chaos? Reckless is going to get run down. Visit Chachi slices and dices. Exactly what you were talking about. Now Foxy gets taken by a tower shot there. Oh. Visit Chachi going in. Congratulations, Mrs. Achachi. I, I know right now you must be uh, a, a little surprised somewhat. Like you said to me, uh, I wasn't expecting this as we handed you the trophy. Uh, what, how are you feeling about being MVP of the spring split? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm actually extremely startled about this right now because some people said it will be like a team captain meeting or something and then I came on stage and this happened, so thank you very much. I'm really appreciating it. Well, we didn't want to spoil the surprise, so we did uh, tell you it was a team captain's interview, but you've done so well with the Unicorns this split. And, you know, it's two years since the Unicorns made a finals last. What's different for you on the Unicorns heading into tomorrow's series? I think uh, the difference is that this roster that we have right now is... Uh, probably the best that we have ever had so far and the team synergy is absolutely on point so I think we have great chances to win this finals this time. So you go up against Expect, uh, a player that a lot of people have talked about. We just saw a montage of your incredible plays. How do you feel now being voted the MVP of the split now going into a matchup tomorrow? How does your one versus one setup against Expect feel to you? Uh, it puts a bit more pressure but uh, I think I'm up to the challenge anyways. You think you're up to a challenge? Would you uh, would you dare to predict the the matchup for tomorrow? The uh, score? I think uh, we will win three to one. You think three one on the series? Well, that's uh, a very bold thing. I know you've got a lot of fan, uh, you know, support here in Hamburg. How much does the fans being in the corner of the unicorns count for you in game and out of game, Chaji? Uh, they help a lot, and this arena, the atmosphere already looks insane. So I believe tomorrow's matches will be absolutely hype and uh, there will be a lot of action as well. 
Well, congratulations again for being MVP of the Split Visit Chachi. You've had a phenomenal performance. We're looking forward to seeing what you can do tomorrow in the finals. We want to hear more about the third place match, so we're going to head back over to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Stress and Visit Chachi. And let's just take a moment to obviously look ahead tomorrow. He'll be playing in the final up versus Expect in the UOL versus G2, but a very rightful MVP. There were a lot of strong candidates, but it shows to me that Visit Chachi has had one of his best splits uh, to date. I mean, he, he's always good. Like, he's consistently always performing. And I think the past two years, he's always been considered like top, uh, maybe top three to, uh, top laner here in Europe. So, uh, well deserved for him, for sure. Definitely. I have nothing but praise for Visit Chachi. I think that he is one of the key members of Unicorn's success. And I am very excited to see what he can bring out on this stage tomorrow. Yeah, it said it's going to be fired three and one, according to him. We'll see. But for now, we're going to turn back to today's action with the fight for third place. This best of five series is a chance for both Misfits and Fnatic to prove themselves as top teams in the EU LCS. Uh, what are these two teams bringing to the table? Let's start with Misfits. How do the Misfits like to win games? So we, we say Misfits like the, the discount G2. They like to play slow. They, they like to take um, not as many risks as some of the other teams like Fnatic. Um, so we, we, will, we will see them play like strong macro and win by playing the, the macro style. And that is how they want to win. And on the other side, Fnatic, are they going to bring the explosivity? I think Fnatic are going to bring the Fnatic style. The fact that they bring out these unique and interesting picks, the fact that they play so heavily towards bot side is really why I think they're going to be looking to build a lot of their advantages, thanks to the early game presence of Broxen. Well, um, what I've been pondering about is the fact that in the semifinals, we saw Fnatic's style or animal style getting dismantled by G2 in that best of five. They only won game one, and then it started to unravel. So do, do we think they're going to stay with that strategy or maybe look for a different route? They will for sure stay with the same kind of yes. strategy. <laughs> uh, but the, the thing was G2 kind of is, I think G2 is the best team at adapting here in Europe and it really showed in the series. I'm not sure if, if Misfits can do the same. So I want to see Fnatic start off strong, playing aggressive, playing really proactive and that is how they're going to gonna be the Misfits today. Oh, we'll see what happens on the macro level. I do want to dial into some of the lane matchups and how can we not go to the mid lane first. Power of Evil up versus Caps and Power of Evil has the home crowd behind him, uh, home crowd rather here in Hamburg. He will be feeling the pressure the first time for him returning to the very biggest of stages, and it is in Germany, and it is up versus that very aggressive rookie of Caps. And to me, he is one of the star players that you need to look at for Misfits because they have had the most success when this man goes off. If he's able to get a lead and he's able to roam around off with Kakao onto these side lanes, that's really where you see Misfits flourish because Power of Evil as an individual is more than capable of getting his own lead as we were able to see multiple times in their series as Unicorns of Blood. I mean, I had the pleasure to talk to Cap yesterday and he said he already wrote Power of Evil in his little book. Um, so we will see how that goes. He was also really confident they were going to win 3-0. So I, I have uh, high expectations of, uh, of Cap. He's an uh, incredible player. Yeah, he is. We'll see how that mid lane matchup plays out. And of course, that's always connected to the jungle matchup. We have Kakao here versus Broxa. If we look at the whole split, Kakao early was like mentioned, maybe he could be grow into a possible MVP candidate here or there. And Broxa had a very different trajectory coming in there for Fnatic when they were struggling as a lineup. And is it fair to say that in the last couple of weeks, Broxa has proven a bit more, he's been more active or, or visible in how the Fnatic won their games. Yeah, I mean, we also have to take into account that um, Kakao got double banned in most games, like Lee Sin and Elise, and I think that's the most important part, part of this jungle matchup. They like both, both like Lee Sin and Elise, so we will see, like, are they, are they playing the matchup or are they banning it out and playing something else? Uh, and I think removing these two gems from Kakao has shown uh, good things. But I think now we've seen, we've got a lot of time. The, the Misfits have been preparing, they want to get themselves a win, they want to prove to this crowd that they are a top three team in Europe. And I'm expecting Kakao to have worked on something else, to be able to bring something to the table and challenge the early game presence that has been so good for Broxa in recent weeks. Definitely. So if we look at the match as a whole, tomorrow and today are actually kind of similar in the fact that we have a more aggressive, proactive team versus a more macro-heavy, controlled style team. So um, if played the best, which style will be victorious here? If Misfits can play out their slow macro, will we be able to choke out Fnatic? I think the, the biggest difficulty for Misfits will be dealing with this early game because in my eyes, they are a the team that has a playbook in mind. And when things stick to the playbook, then they are an excellent team. They know exactly what to do, they know exactly where to move their players and how to play. But then when you add a new chapter to the page, that's where Misfits get a little bit confused. And Fnatic, they like to write new books 
halfway through the game, bringing out lane swaps, bringing out picks that they've never played against before. I think this will be the big curveball that Misfits have to demonstrate whether or not they can adapt on the fly. And uh, the exciting part about Fnatic is like, you, know, you don't know if they came up with something completely new and maybe they will uh, fire it towards Misfits. And I think the difference between Misfits and G2 is that G2 have shown that they can adapt and they, they, they can maybe lose a game and then they will adapt for next and then it will be fine. But I haven't really seen that from, from Misfits yet, so we will have to see if they can adapt to Fnatic style. For sure. So. Uh, tell me, how is it going to play out? Who's going to win and who's going to win that third place decider? I think that given the recent performances of both teams and given the early game dominance, Fnatic will take this series 3-1. to one. I think there's some kind of a 50-50 split. The power <laughs> of evil and Misfits fans and the Fnatic fans always there. Uh, you know, I think this series will be a lot closer than people expect. And I think that it will go to all five games. Um, and I, a lot of it will, will come down to who gets, who is going to win the first game. I think Fnatic is a very momentum-based team. And if they get off a really good start, then they could easily take the series. But I, I have uh, hopes for Misfits to make this a uh, close one. All right, let's see how it plays out. The wait is over. Let's get lost. And we are ready for our third place decider. Let's step on stage and meet today's contenders. Tonight's match is the third place decider best of five series. The winner will earn 50 points towards qualifying for the 2017 World Championship. Introducing first on the blue side of the rift for game number one, the five time European LCS champions Fanatic! In the top lane, Soaz! In the jungle, Broxa! In the mid lane, Caps! And AD Carry, the people's champion, Reckless! At support, it's Jezzes! The coach for Fnatic, Finley Stewart. their opponents starting on the red side of the rift for game number one making their debut appearance in an LCS final round match it's Misfits Top lane, Alfari! Roaming the jungle, Kakao! Minor Dahmen and Heron, begrüßen Sie mit mir aus Deutschland! Power of Evil! D carry Han Sama at support it's Igna and the coach for Misfits is Hussein Musvi players please take your seats for the match Everybody, please once again welcome the teams for the third place decider! 